Welcome to Bitch Talk Booze Interviews straight from the heart of San Francisco. This is our Basic Bitch Part 2, where Ange and I have uh, been catching each other up on life because she's been gone for, it feels like four months. It was really just a couple weeks, but a lot has happened in those couple of weeks, especially Game of Thrones and stuff happening in San Francisco where we live and, uh, you know, just the news in general. So um, please enjoy this part two of our basic bitch. And don't forget, you can find us at bitchtalkpodcast.com. You can also catch us at our new home, bff.fm, every Monday morning from 5.30 to 6 a.m. And uh, let's get into it, part two with basic bitch. So while you were away, and we talked about this before you left, the punchline got bought. Yeah, and fucking RIP. Well, and um, so you left, and a friend of the show that's been on before, Chris Garcia, just announced a show, literally, kind of around, well, no, a few weeks before, and then you were gone. I'm like, well, we have to definitely go now, because who the hell knows? So we ended up going to see him, and one of the best sets I've ever seen. Really? And very different from what we saw. I was and just, hilarious. I was just going to say, I, that reminds me that I, I really do want to see those uh, comedians that we saw yes. at... Uh, Reimagine? Reimagine. Yeah. On their own, uh, on their, as a usual set, because I know that they did special sets just yes. for that. Yeah. And, I lo- and he was incredible. He was incredible. And so... He was the headliner, and it was his first time ever headlining at Punchline. And so his headlining week was the week that it was announced that they might, they will be closing yeah. uh, towards the end of the year. Or no, in August, I think. I have to see his show before it's over. Oh, yeah, well, he On only did. Saturday did, night. No, he only did, one, like, four no, days. No, not his show, but a show oh, a at show. the Punchline. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, no, no, we're going to go to, like, I, we just want to go to, like, Sunday uh, when they have the um, showcase. When it's just a bunch of comedians that keep coming up that are local. Yes, let's yeah, do it. let's do it. So we went and saw it was a Friday night, but we went to the early show and our friend uh, C-Note came along because she's like, I just want to go see. She's been on Maui for two and a half years and it's beautiful, but there's nothing like there's no comedy. There's no music like it's really lacking. So she's kind of up to do whatever, which is great. So we went. All of the comedians were fucking hilarious. There was one guy in particular that showed up. His set might have been, like, four minutes. We were dying. Like, he wasn't (laughs) on the bill. We were dying. It starts out... uh, His uh, bit started out as he was fucking a shoe one night. Like, and I was dying. And it... Anyways, hilarious. And so Chris came up there, and his set was probably about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. From start to finish, we were dying. We were... It was hilarious. Wow. Did you say hi to him? Yeah. And it, he was so sweet. So he did he remember? Yeah, he remember. And I tweeted from Bitch Talk like we were gonna go see him. Like I want to give him a little promotion and stuff because he's so good. And um, but his his set started off with so I was on bar today and someone thought I was Peter Dinklage. And if you look <laughs> at his face and you look at Peter Dinklage, it looks the same. And we were dying. And he's like, Yeah, I can reach the I can reach the overhead thing. Like I, of course I'm not Peter Dinklage, but um. He was great. So we had a great night. We ended up like, we're like, oh, we're going to get the 7.30 show and be super early and, you know, be home by around 10. No. Because we're in North Beach. And so, you know, we're like, hey, let's go to uh, Specs for a drink and then we'll go home. So we go to Specs. We were there for more than one drink because then we kept meeting more people at the bar, as you do. And Lucy was there, our favorite bartender. Oh, nice. And she was asking about you. That's and I was like, we'll be, yeah, we'll be in there. And then we're like, let's just go to the saloon. There has to be some music. Oh, and of course, I don't like going to comedy shows on a Friday or Saturday night. Why do you think? Because there's always first timers and people that don't know how to act at a comedy show. Of course, there were two people right in the front of the show, older people that have been overserved, probably been partying since like four in the afternoon, and then came to a comedy show, and the guy, of course, and the couple decided to talk back and forth with Chris, and Chris was making fun of him and calling him blue chinos and all this stuff, and then they finally left. So where do we see them? At the saloon, like three hours later. Oh, God. Yes. So we come into the saloon, and it was pretty packed, and the saloon is basically at the end of Angie's block. And it's been there since the 1800s. They claim to be the oldest bar in San Francisco. Well, yeah, there are a few that do. There's a few that do. But this one is it real. It smells like it is. And it's real <laughs> basic. 
Like, don't come in there and get in a fucking mixed drink. Well, I like that their drinks are fucking cheap. Yeah, that too. And they always have good music. Always live music. Yes. So we ended up paying five bucks to get in. Fine. It's a Friday night. That's cheap. I think it was five. And, uh, well, Jameson is five, so you make up your money. Right. So we walk in, and there was like, you know, as you walk in, it's like a kitty corner, and then there's this spot of the bar. I'm, I'm pointing it to Ange. Listeners, you can't see it. There's a little spot at the bar, and then it takes like a, it's like a, is it a big old bar shape or an L? I can't remember. There's another side to it, right? It's a bar. Yeah, it's like a U. It is a U. Okay. Why are you making things so complicated? I don't know, because I'm trying to think of how it's it looks. It's a normal bar. It's a normal bar. <laughs> Thank you. You walk in, and to the left is the bar. But you're walking in. And there's a narrow hallway. Right. And then there's the dance floor with the stage. In the back. But yeah. you, when you walk in, it's a kitty corner. You're not there walking little, in to yeah. like. So that side was, there's like one chick sitting there, and it was kind of open, and we're like, we'll just order drinks there and obviously not take it up, because you could kind of tell someone was probably sitting there or whatever. So Jeff goes over there, and he starts ordering drinks, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm getting to that age where I'm like, I'm not mixing all night, so just give me wine all night, which still gives me a bad headache, but I don't care. At least I'm not barfing. So he orders me a, a red wine at the saloon, which actually, I'm like... Uh, one of the youngest people there, maybe. So don't judge my drink. Just shut the fuck up. So he's ordering, and then I'm like, oh, I'm going to go over there and help him. So I go over there, and this, the girl that's sitting there that, well, she's probably younger than I am. She's like, oh, these si- people are sitting here. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not taking the seats. I'm just getting the drink. And she keeps looking out the window and, like, is super impatient with us. Then this big old motherfucker comes walking in. Big old literally? Like, yes, physically big old, big. big old, like... You'd see him on Breaking Bad, maybe, or like, uh, he's like a, uh, hell, he's a Hell's Angel. Okay. And wearing the uh, vest. Comes up and They're I. They're called cuts. What are they called? A cut. Those like a motorcycle crew. Oh. Leather vest. Oh, they're not called a vest. Did it have the patch on it? Oh, everything was on yeah, it. Yeah, they're called a cut. Oh. FYI. Glad you know you that. You ever watched Sons of Anarchy? That's what I meant. Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. Anar- yeah Anarchy. It's a cut. Okay. I did try and wa- anyways. I did try and watch Sons of Anarchy. Oh, I, I didn't love get th- that show. I didn't get through it. So he comes wa- walking in, comes up to the bar, and like basically takes my red wine and moves it over, and was pissed that Jeff was ordering a red wine. Poor, I mean, poor Jeff. He's just trying to do us all a favor. <laughs> so that's when I came over, and I'm coming it's in a little like he's hot. Buying tampons for Christ's sake. And wh- and who the fuck cares if exactly. he was? Like, who go fuck yourself. So exactly. he moves it over, huffing and puffing. And I'm really like, wow, we just paid for this experience. This is awesome. And we're coming in a little hot. You know, you have to order drinks at the punchline. We got a drink before that. Went to Specs. So I'm getting a little riled up. And it's fine, though. I'm like, I'm not going to start shit with, like, a Hell's Angel. Right. So he moves our shit, is pissed off. And I, I got him like, oh, yeah, that's for me. Thanks. And I walked off. And I'm like, uh. And so we drink our drink hella fast. And the guys, the Hell's Angel is just. Like, I feel like he's going to take Jeff's head and twist it off his body and throw it out the door. It was really weird. Then we saw the same people, I told you this, that got kind of thrown out of the punchline. And we're like, we're going to leave. Then I was like, where can we go that's kind of quiet, probably? And Don't tell me you went to Hawaii West. No. We went to Hawaii the, West fucking sucks now. No, we went to that other place we went to for your birthday. Nobody was there. There were like four people there. Vienna, Vienna. Oh, yeah, Beanie yeah, yeah. Beanie. That is always a safe place, hey, I think. I love it. It was great. We got some pizza, slices of pizza, and we sat there. And that was the end of it. No, he didn't want to stand the in place that line. On Columbus across the street? Uh, Nazario's. Oh, okay. Which isn't my favorite, and I was, I was going to stand in line for uh, Golden Boy, but no one else was having it. It was a long-ass line. No, fuck that. So, um... Only go there when... You're with me and the homies working. Or it's a, like it's a weeknight. It. Yeah. It's not worth it. It's not. Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> you know what? It's your, if it's your first time coming to the city and you want a real good slice of pizza and there's a line, I would stand in Golden Boy. I would recommend it. It's so good. Oh, for sure. But there's a new pizza spot in the corner of Columbus and Stockton, is it? Anyway, I haven't tried it yet, but you can grab a slice there too. Um, okay, good to know. So that was that night. I will fast forward a week later on a Friday again. Uh, it was Memorial Day weekend. We went to Tony's for a very long afternoon lunch to see our friend Rob Bell. And then we were like, let's just try the saloon again. It's four, or no, it was like three thirty, four o'clock. We're like, oh, they're open. They probably have music. Same dude is there. 
What? Yeah. Where the fuck With his hell's, hell's Angel ship. And uh, we walk in, and he looks at Jeff, and he's like, oh, you coming to the club? And we're like, oh, no. Are you going to hit? Not hit on us. Are you going to pick on us again? So we didn't even order a drink, and we hightailed it out, and we're like, let's just go to Specs. It's now it's after four. We're cool. So we go into Specs, see Lucy, thank God, again. And then there's this local lady sitting there, and we're just chatting her up for a minute. And I'm like, are you, are you from the neighborhood? She's like, yeah. I'm like, do you ever go to the saloon? She's like, yeah. I'm like, there's a real asshole that's hanging out there who's a fucking hell's angel. And she's like, oh, yeah, his name's Shane, and he's fucking terrible. And he is a bartender there. And what? she thinks... And he's shaking down the owner who's supposed to be really cool. And it's a whole thing. And I'm like, well, we're not going back for a while. What? He's a fucking dick. He's a bartender. Yes. There. And he Shane treats is his name? Shane. Oh, you'll know who he is if you go in. He's a piece of shit. Wow. Yes. And I'm like, well, I won't be going for a while. Sorry, Saloon. And I love you. But so that was a Friday. Smell you later. Smell you later. Next day after the punchline, we were all a little hungover. We're like, we want our Mexican breakfast. We're going to go to San Jalisco in the mission. Have you been there? I don't know. For Mexican breakfast. It's on the corner of South Van Ness, 19th, 20th. We ate. We were coming out. And I'm like, oh, shit. It's Chris Garcia. Oh, shit. The whole lineup from the night before is at the same place. What? And I was wearing my bitch talk sweatshirt. And he gave me a hug. And I was like, that was probably one of the best sets I've seen in such a long time. He's like, thank you. Talking about the punchline. And then I saw the guy who started with the, uh, he was fucking, fucking his shoe. shoe. And I was like, that bit was hella funny, fucking your shoe. He's like, oh, well, uh, I haven't brought that one out in like nine years. I'm like, oh, it's a winner. It was hella <laughs> funny. Um, but it was, it was fun. It was fun. We had a fun little weekend. Nice. Go to the punchline. Support it. While you were gone, Chappelle was here last week, by the way. How about my homie? Yeah. Yeah. Your, your fucking friend, Chappelle, Debbie Kamau Bell. Local um, comedian Nato Green. Um, Maybe that's one perk. All all the all the big names are gonna come through. They did. The final they line. went to the no no no. They went to the front of the city hall steps and were like, the punchline needs to be saved. Aaron Peskin was there. Sandra Lee Fewer. Um, God, I can't remember her name. The mission supervisor. Hillary Ronan. She was there, and they're like, we're gonna save the punchline. <laughs> So there have already been articles that... So Google was supposed to be one of the people taking over that space. Who? Google. Oh, God. Yeah, exactly. What the fuck? Yes. So Google now is like, oh my we're God. not going to... We're not taking it over, and we're going to help you guys save it. So we'll see. Wow, that's great news. Yes. Yes. So that happened while you were gone. The wow. other thing that happened while you were gone uh, was the end of Game of Thrones. Should we quickly talk about how uh, disappointed we yeah, are? Yeah, it's quick. <laughs> It'll be quick Spoiler. So uh, we went to a little party to see the end of it, right? And so the second to the last episode was like kind of whatever again. It, to me, it was like it was when yeah. she went nutso. No, I know. Yeah. So... I feel like certain parts of it were entertaining to watch, but none of it was a surprise. No. Uh, because... Felt like a waste of time. Just want to be honest a little bit. Well, you knew that she was going to go crazy, right? But what bothered me was... Okay, so the last dragon gets shot down and killed, but this one just fucking kills everyone in two seconds? Mm Mm-hmm. Why why all of a sudden is it so easy for the dragon to just kill everyone? Right. When the last dragon got shot down so easily. Right. So I'm confused by that. I feel like everything was just so rushed. Very rushed. Like, this show, at least in my opinion, prided itself on taking its time with the characters. Slow slow burn. Like, literally, you won't see a character for years. Yes. I'm looking at you, Gendry, Bone and Arya. (laughs) You don't see a character for years. Yep. And then all of a sudden, they show up, and you get little bits here and there. Yep. And and you have to remember, wait, when's the last time I saw that? Yes. and that's what made it so special, right? Yeah. you actually gave a shit to kind of, like, follow these arcs. And then all of a sudden in this last season, the arcs are out the fucking window. Everything happens in fast forward. Yep. And now it's like, wait, whoa, whoa, calm down, calm down. I'm not used to all of this shit happening so fast. I don't understand why it had to be that way. It felt like they had two years instead of just one. And... And still, it was so rushed. Just yeah. Not satisfying. No. I'm just pissed because it wasn't, it was so predictable. 
What? How pissed were you? What? When fucking Peter Dinklage, Tyrion, comes out and it's all these folks sitting in their council, right? And some you haven't seen in years. Some we don't even know. No, and I was like, who? I thought he died. I was like, I thought that guy died. Some I, of them we didn't even know. No. Or saw for like one 10 minute piece like five years ago, maybe. Because Jeff didn't realize that that kid that was sucking on his mom's boob like five years ago or 10 years ago was the same kid. I'm like, and he just figured that out this week. He was like, oh my oh God. Oh shit, he was sitting there? Yes, he was in the blue. That was the same kid. Ew. Exactly. Ew. <laughs> exactly. The, the sister reason, of. I recognize somebody, the dude from Dorne, just because they dress well, up. Well, duh, and they're hot. <laughs> <laughs> Where's that mom, by well, the way? I don't know if he was hot, but he was dressed for They're all weak, but they're all hot. Those people. Okay. The, that group of people. Super racist. But when he's going on and on, who has the story and who the blah, blah, blah. And Snore. then he says, Bran, I kind of, I had to hold it together because I was at a party and everyone was quiet. And I just looked at Jeff and he was all, he just shook his head. And then I just started laughing like, of course, of course. Useless. We're just saying how useless he is. So useless. And then Bran's like, why do you think, think I'm, I'm here? here? <laughs> First of all, during the war with the dead, whites. Uh, whites? whites. <laughs> what are you? I what happened to you? Name wrong. The Walking Dead? No. The White Walkers. The white. Right. <laughs> wow. Is that you're wrong? back in Trump's America, and you're just like the, the whites. White Walkers. White Walkers. You're right. The whites. Um. <laughs> He's just sitting there while everybody... Oh, granted, he can't fight, but it's just so no. boring. We yeah. were just talking about how fucking boring his yep. character was. And then I was saying, like, there's got to be this greater purpose. There's going to be something for the third eye raven, third eye blind. Third you eye know. blind. He My third a, eye. A special gift of talking people off the ledge. <laughs> it's a third eye blind After he, by the oh, way. Oh, also that he fell off a ledge. Anyways, I thought that's, oh, that's what you were referring to. that's what I meant, but now it's twofold. Yeah, it's a two-fold joke. Reference. Yeah, no, it's a two-fold joke. There you go. That was pretty oh, clever. Yeah. Of me. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> that second glass of wine. Duh. Kicking in. Duh. No, but yeah, I was. Well, first of all, you're a prisoner, and now you're telling all these leaders like, <laughs> "Well, this is what should happen," and he has the best story. Yes. I don't know. Does he have the best story? Bran? Yeah. No, Bran the Broken. His, every time they show him, I'm snoring. Yeah. Literally. My eyes roll back like his do every time I see best him. Best fucking story. Arya. What about Arya's story? Yeah, well, I... She doesn't want to be... Le but he doesn't have the best story. No. He knows all the stories. Yeah. He's the keeper of the story. Peter Dinklage might have the best stories. Anyways, you know what, Game of Thrones? You served your purpose... I'm not going to see the movie when it comes out in five years. Or maybe by that point I won't be as pissed. But I, I'm good. It's good. Fine. Whatever. It's over. Yeah, I was pretty disappointed because, as I mentioned, I was on the cruise, so I was highly anticipating watching it. I, I'm proud of you. And I didn't look at anything because of it. I didn't want any spoilers. Could you have watched it, though, on the cruise if you wanted to or no? What? Could you... Could you have watched it on the cruise if you wanted to? No, we oh. tried. Like, Aunt, or my sister had HBO Go, and then my boyfriend gave me his Chromecast. Oh, cute. So we can watch yeah. it on the TV yeah. on the ship. And, of course, her it didn't, over international waters, right. didn't HBO work. Go doesn't work. Got it. Which is bullshit, HBO Go. Figure it out. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Well, it was funny when we brought this up before you left. We were like, do people, like, internationally watch this? Like, we weren't sure. And I meant to bring it up that our friend, who is our Sherpa in Nepal, has been posting about Game of Thrones. Oh, my God. What's his name? Uh, it starts with an M. Surendra. Surendra, yes. Oh, my God. Yeah. Of he's course they watch, watch it everywhere. Well, I didn't know. We didn't know. We talked about it. Surendra. He was great. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, so, yeah, right. yeah. So that was that. Um... Wah, wah. Yeah, I'll do a special shout out because it's this week. Jeff and I last week saw um, the debut of Brooke S. Stewart's web series called Shaky Ground. Oh, shit. And it is really good. Congratulations, uh, Where Brooke you watch it? YouTube. It comes out this Wednesday, uh, May 29th. 
and uh, there's it's it's um I think it's three episodes, but they're all kind of wrapped up together. And one of them is called uh, "It's All About the Motherly App," and it is fucking hilarious. It's like motherly. Tell me the weather outside. Motherly. I don't know. It's basically like what Alexa and all those other shits are, but called motherly because it's taking care of your ass. So <laughs> it was really well done, Stuart. He said he was doing, he's been writing this for a while and he just finally was able to shoot it and make it happen. There's a lot of local comedians that are in it. It's good. It's cool. really good. So cool. it's funny. Shout out to Broke Ass. And, uh, you know, maybe Angie and I will finally do an episodic. We talked about it for a while when she's done with her job. And I, and yeah, <laughs> our friends, uh, the cast and crew of Booksmart that opened over the weekend. What? Booksmart opened over the weekend. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we saw it for the second time last week. Just as good, if not better. I think I need to see it again. You do. Pay for it. Go see it. I saw that Sean Baker posted about it. Oh, Sean he Baker, did. Director oh, of Florida Project. <sighs> and Tangerine. Oh, I know what I want oh, to say. Oh, okay. I was so proud when I was on the flight. I flew American yeah. or United. I don't I know. I don't even remember anymore. I haven't slept much in the past it's six okay. months. It's okay. But um, <laughs> this whole year, you haven't slept really. Let's be honest. But um, when we were on the plane under new releases, I swear to fucking God, twenty of the films we've interviewed people mm. from. It was a uh, Beale Street could talk. Eighth grade. Nice. RBG. Nice. Um, we didn't do if Beale Street could talk. I'm sad. No, no, but Barry Jenkins. Right. Well, I mean, yeah. People associated with as well. Yes. Ben is back. Oh, nice. Um, yes. Um, oh, my God. I should have written it down. It's okay. It's all your homies. Anyway. It's basically all the interviews I couldn't make. So thank you. Yeah. And I, I had my sister watch eighth grade because I was like. Which I still haven't seen. Just Oh my god, I you, forgot. I haven't seen that and I want to. What we're watching right now, which you, you got to, to see watch early. It right is now. We're watching Black Klansman. We're halfway through on HBO. You don't watch Black Klansman yet? Just watching it now, girl. Got I, I got a lot I to catch. You oh, did because you were you able to. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, um No, oh, it's way more than that. I'm so mad. I should have written down all the films. But like easily 10 of the new releases. Awesome. We've interviewed Duh. The, the people behind Duh. it. Yeah, I was Duh. so proud. So if you haven't heard our Book Smart interview, please go back and listen to that. It, we did a lot in the little time that we had. I listened to it. Um, and of course, Ange always has great, great questions. Um, and that's why I pay her to be here. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, um, what? Yeah, we, but, both yeah, of us. Yeah, but also we, we've just... Uh, we just released our Wu-Tang interviews um, this month, and we also uh, released our interview with the director of Ask Dr. Ruth, which is out right now. His name's Ryan White, so you can go back through our all of our interviews. We, just, we have a lot, guys. There's a lot going on. <laughs> we have so many. So I think this is going to be it for uh, this basic bitch. I'm so happy Angie's back. I miss her. Ah, and it's true. Thanks. The only time we do see each other is for Bitch Talk right now. But that's not going <laughs> to be forever. It's not forever. Um, we're planning and plotting. Uh, we also just hired a PR company to help us. which We will do be have a lot of uh, some exciting things in the works. So. We do. Live events at the end of the year. Like, there's shit happening. So uh, we're coming back together. And don't forget to find us at bitchtalkpodcast.com. Also at BFF.FM every Monday morning from 5.30 to 6 a.m. And we're powered by GoToProductions. Bitch, please. <laughs>